How do you welcome guys? I could not be more excited because today we are assembling a 2JZ GTE. Let's cut the chit chat and get right into the parts that we're gonna use for this build. So we're gonna get rid of those old stock pistons and bring in some manly forge pistons. These are 86.5 millimeters with a nine to one compression ratio and will do great on our build. We're gonna be using the stock connecting rods on this build. They'll hold the power just fine and I've opted to replace the wrist pin bushing just to freshen them up a little bit. Of course, we're gonna be using some ARP head studs for this build along with some GSD stage one cams and a drift motion billet timing belt idler pulley. And that wraps it up for all the major components. The first stop for this build is actually the kitchen. We're gonna be heating up our stock piston and connecting rod combo to get that wrist pin all nice and toasty so I can tap it out and get that connecting rod independent of the piston. So here I am tapping it out using some uh, questionable methods but eventually we got them apart, so there we go. Next up, we're gonna be painting the block. I just used some standard Rust-Oleum black paint. It was high temperature stuff, and uh, as long as you mask everything off, this is a relatively easy step, and it turned out really, really nice. So now I'm installing the oil galley plugs. These are really easy. You just tap them in with a hammer and you just put them in as far as they can go and then you're done. The oil squirters are next on the list. So you can see I've installed five out of the six here and you're just gonna screw that right into the block, torque it down and you are good to go. Now it's time to gap our piston ring. So you have your piston ring filer right there. I've got all my piston rings labeled and in their respective bags, as you can see, nice and organized. I've got my one piston to square everything up in the block, my feeler gauge to check our gap and a jeweler's file. And when you buy pistons, you should get a general gapping recommendation sheet like I have here. And this is what I'll be using to figure out the gaps for my piston rings. So the first step here is to make sure everything is nice and clean. I'm wiping down the bore. I'm wiping down the piston rings. Gotta make sure everything is dirt free. And now you're going to take your piston ring, square it up in the bore with the piston like I'm doing in the video there. And you're gonna take your preliminary measurement with your feeler gauge. And then it is time to grind away until you get to your gap. So here I am grinding the piston ring and you'll notice I'm grinding towards the inside of the ring. And that is so the layers of the piston ring don't delaminate from each other. So just get rid of all those nasty sharp edges with the jeweler's file. And eventually after a lot of grinding, you'll get to the gap that you need. So now we're gonna connect our pistons to the connecting rods. And to do this, we're gonna first lube up everything. And I'm talking everything. So the wrist pins we're gonna lube up, the bushing in the connecting rod we're gonna lube up, the bore in the piston, everything. Now it's time to install our first C-clip. And these things are a total, total pain to install. I'm telling you from experience, they're terrible. But we got the first one in there with a screwdriver. We're gonna push the wrist pin through and then we're gonna install the next C-clip. And these things, they, oh, they're terrible. I don't like them. Just make sure you're wearing eye protection. So with those out of the way, now it's time to install our piston rings on the piston. So first up is our oil scrubber, goes in the bottom groove there with the oil rails coming up next, which go on either side of the oil scrubber. And then we've got our piston ring expander tool to install our second compression ring. So that just sits on the piston there. And then same procedure for the top compression ring, just expand it and then slip it right on the piston. Your piston ring should also come with a diagram that shows which way to install the rings because they are directional. Now let's pop in those connecting rod bearings and these are pretty easy. You just make sure everything is nice and clean and dry before these go in and you just literally snap them right into their respective spots on the connecting rod and connecting rod cap. So here we are back at the block, ready to install our main bearings. And just like with the connecting rod bearings, everything has to be nice, clean, and dry when these go in. So here I am popping those bearings right into the block there, along with your main caps. Don't forget those guys. So I opted to check my main bearing clearances before everything went in and was installed, and I used some Plasti Gauge to do this. There's plenty of tutorials on YouTube for how to use this stuff, so I won't go over it here, but uh, luckily all of our clearances looked good after our Plasti Gauge test, so I went ahead to install everything. So now I'm just lubing everything up, ready to go and be installed. So here we are with the main bearing caps. We're doing the same thing on the main bearings in the block. And then don't forget your thrust washers, guys. Lube them up. And here I am with my dad. He's helping me put that crankshaft in the block because I'm not strong enough to do it myself with my noodle arms. Make sure it spins nice and freely. And before we torqued everything down, I also wanted to check the run out on the crankshaft after being stored for so long. And luckily everything checked out after I tested the run out. 
So now it's time to torque the crank down and this comes in two phases. So the first phase, which I'm doing right here is just tightening those main bolts down to a certain torque. And then in the next phase, I'm actually gonna be drawing a line on all of the main bolts because you need to rotate the bolts 90 degrees. That's the last step to torquing those puppies down. So the line helps you know when you've hit 90 degrees. Okay, with the crank in, it's time to put those pistons in the block. And like everything else, you're gonna lube it up before it gets installed. So we lubed up the bores and here I am lubing up the pistons. So one crucial step is to make sure that your piston rings are in the correct orientation on the piston. And my piston rings came with a little diagram that showed me where to put those gaps. So that's what I followed and that's what I'm doing in this shot here. All right, it's time to finally install those pistons. So I'm using a piston ring compressor to do this. As you can see, that's that blue thing around the top of the piston there. And all you're gonna do is slide the piston down into the bore and let the piston ring compressor sit on the deck. And you just wanna make sure that piston ring compressor is nice and tight. So I'm just tightening that up a little bit. And then you can just tap that piston down into the bore with the bottom of a hammer, just like I'm doing there. Nice and simple. So now we're gonna flip that block over and get our connecting rod mated with the crankshaft journal. So first step, lube it up just like everything else. And then we're going to tap the piston lower into the bore to mate the crankshaft journal with the connecting rod. Pop on that connecting rod cap and then you just torque it down and you are good to go. Piston installed. All right, so here I am just making sure that rotating assembly moves nice and freely and man, you love to see it. But now it's time to progress with the build now that we know that everything is nice and good to go. So here I am installing the dowels on the deck of the block here and these help locate the head gasket as well as the cylinder head. So I'm taking a nut to help tap that in because you don't want to hammer directly onto the dowel itself. And now it's time to install the cylinder head. This is very exciting. And this cylinder head was rebuilt by the people over at Head Games Motorworks in New Jersey. They did a phenomenal job. We're doing new cams, we're doing new valves, shimless buckets, the works. So they did a really great job and it's really as easy as just popping it on the block. So before we can install the head, we need to install the head gasket. So this thing just literally pops right on the deck of the block using those dowels to help locate it. And then we are going to lube up the bores just a little bit more before the head goes on to the block. And here I am with my dad again, putting that head onto the block there. So I'm being very careful not to scratch the mating surface with the dowels there. So I'm just very carefully locating that thing as you can see. And there we go, it's on. So now it's time to install the ARP head studs. And the first step here is to lube up and install those washers on the head. And these need to go in first because you won't be able to install them after the studs are in. So that is a crucial step that you do not wanna mess up on because it'll cost you a lot of time later. And now you can drop those head studs in. Just make sure they're lubed up before you drop them in. And now it's time to torque those head studs down. So this happens in three passes and it goes in a specific sequence. So I believe my final torque was 85 five foot pounds for these guys. So just take your time and you should be good to go. So now let's install that front main seal and oil pump. And to do this, I'm actually installing the oil pump on the block dry. So no RTV sealant going on there. And that's because I 3D printed this cool little gizmo that is actually gonna press in the front main seal. It fits over the snout of the crank there and uses the crank pulley bolt to press in the front main. So here I am just popping that front main into the oil pump there just very loosely. And then I'm gonna take the little 3D printed presser tool I made and start tightening it down with the crank pulley bolt, which then actually transfers that pressure onto the front main. So it's just pressing it right into the oil pump and it went in flawlessly. So now that the front main is in, it's time to install that oil pump. So I'm throwing down a little RTV sealant. Looks real pretty there. And I almost forgot, don't forget to install these two O-rings that go on the block there, the oil pump fits over them. And just take your time when you're putting the oil pump on. You don't wanna get the RTV everywhere. Just take your time. I was struggling a little bit, but finally got it. Tap it in just a little bit with a rubber mallet and then you can torque in those bolts and there you go, oil pump installed. All right, I installed the front main seal, so now it's about time to install that rear main seal. So here I am putting some RTV on the rear main seal retainer, popping it on the block and torquing it down. So here I am just loosely placing the rear main seal into its spot in the retainer there because I 3D printed this cool little pressure tool that's gonna help me install the rear main. It uses the flywheel bolts to help me do this. You tighten them down and then it helps get that rear main seal flush. And it was one of the easiest installs I've ever done. 
here I am putting some RTV on the girdle or some people call it the upper oil pan. So I'm just gonna pop that right on the block. Of course I stand right in front of the camera because I'm a professional videographer. And I just popped it on there, made sure everything was nice and pressed down, torqued down the girdle bolts, and that was really easy to install as well. Now that the girdle's on, we can put in our windage tray. There's no RTV here, just a couple of bolts. And then you torque them down and it's just about time for our oil pickup. So you take your gasket here and put that on the block like so. And then you take your oil pickup and you pop that right in. There's one bolt and two nuts. You torque those down, it's quick and easy and it was in in about two minutes. The lower oil pan is up next and we're putting a generous amount of RTV on this thing to make sure it doesn't leak, but you just line it up on those studs coming off of the girdle there, pop it in, torque down the bolts, uh, I think they're 10 millimeters on this thing, and you're good to go. And just for some added insurance, I'm installing a Gretti magnetic oil plug just to catch any loose metal bits that are floating around in our oil. Another easy install is the oil level sensor, which just pops in just like so and is held in with four bolts. And that was very easy to torque down and get done. And here I am popping in the crank angle sensor. Just make sure it's nice and clean before you install it and torque it down. The crank pulley literally just slides right onto the crank, no problems there. And don't forget to install this little tab that sits right next to the crank pulley and torque that down. Now don't make this mistake and install your idler pulley before you install the water pump. The water pump has to go on first before the idler pulley. So there you go, a pro tip. The timing belt tensioner is easy enough to install. You just slip it into its slot on the oil pump and torque down the two bolts that hold it in. The next thing going on is the knock sensors. There's two of them that need to go in on the 2JZ and just make sure you install them to the proper torque. If you put them into the wrong torque, they will pick up the wrong frequencies from the block. Here's the water pump going on. Just make sure you have that O-ring installed on the block before you tighten this puppy down. But this one's pretty self-explanatory. The upper water neck goes in next and this bad boy just slips right into the water pump like so. And then there's a little gasket that goes between the cylinder head and the water pipe that you just need to make sure is there before you torque down the two screws that hold this puppy in. All right, time to install the cams. And like every other important part on this engine, we're gonna lube everything up before these bad boys go in. So just make sure the assembly lube is all spread around there and carefully lower in your cams. I was being very gentle. You don't wanna hurt these bad boys. Don't they just look gorgeous? The cam caps are going on in this shot here and just make sure that they go in the correct spot on the cylinder head. They are labeled, so just make sure they go right where they need to be. Now, before you go and tighten those cams down, you're gonna wanna make sure that your rotating assembly is off of top dead center. That's because these cams make the motor run as an interference motor and therefore you could have piston to valve contact if you're not careful. And now that there's no risk of your valves hitting your pistons, you're gonna wanna tighten down your cams. This goes in a certain sequence and just make sure you take your time and go slow with it. The front cam caps have these cam seals that are installed with them and to put these on you just pop them into their proper locations over the cams there and then you're going to just take the front cam cap and tighten it down over top of the cam seal making sure it's nice and pressed in there. And before you install these front cam caps, you're just gonna wanna put a little RTV on the bottom mating surface of the cam cap. This is just to prevent oil leakage. And here I am doing that same procedure for the exhaust front cam cap. This is the timing cover. It's held on with four bolts and is super easy to install. And just make sure you put it on before you install the cam gears. And speak of the devil, here's the exhaust cam gear going on. It's really, really easy. You put on the cam gear and then you tighten down the bolt by putting a wrench on the cam shaft to hold the cams in place while you torque the bolt down to 60 foot pounds. And now that the cam gear is all torqued down, just give it a little wiggle to make sure everything moves freely. The intake cam gear is exactly the same procedure. There's a little Allen head bolt that goes right into the center of the cam gear there. You tighten that down the same way to 60 foot pounds. And then there's a little seal on the outside of the cam gear that gets torqued to 11 foot pounds. So you just pop that bad boy on, screw it down and you're good. Now that the cam gears are torqued down, we're gonna bring everything back to top dead center, starting with the cam gears as I'm doing here. Next, you can bring the rotating assembly back to top dead center by lining up the dot with the dash on the crank pulley. And now that the entire engine is at top dead center, we can throw on the timing belt. And just take your time when you do this, making sure that everything stays aligned. 
And when you have the timing belt right where you want it, you can now torque down your timing belt tensioner. And after that, rotate everything around a couple of revolutions just to make sure you don't jump a tooth on the belt. And if everything's still aligned after a couple of revolutions, you can pull the pin on the tensioner. At this point, we can install our timing belt retainer as well as our lower timing cover. The harmonic damper is next. This is a brand new OEM part, and I'm actually gonna be using the crank pulley bolt to help me fit this thing on the crank. And now you gotta torque this thing down to 239 foot-pounds. This was a challenge for me, being Mr. Noodle Arms out here, but eventually we got it. I was pretty proud of myself. Here's the serpentine belt tensioner going on. It's just three bolts, so it's super easy. And now you can throw on your upper timing cover, which is just another handful of Allen head screws. Because this is a VVTi motor, we have to make sure we install the oil feed line up to the VVTi solenoid. This is really easy with two banjo bolts, and the upper banjo bolt gets this little filter that just fits right on the end there, and you torque everything down, and you're good to go. The valve covers are going on next, and the first step to installing these is installing the gasket onto the valve covers, which is what I'm doing here. And before you install these, put a little RTV in these locations on the cylinder head to prevent oil leakage. Now you can just pop those valve covers on. Look at the concentration on my face there. I'm taking this very seriously. And then you can go ahead and torque down those valve cover bolts. They go to 74 inch pounds and don't have any particular sequence. I also decided to install some radium engineering AN adapters on the valve covers. You don't need to weld these in. You just tap them in with a hammer and they turned out really well because they installed so easily. And that wraps up the build, guys. Obviously, there are a couple of accessories I installed on the engine that I didn't film because they're not too noteworthy, but you really got the gist of what it's like building a 2JZ, and I took you through in a little bit of detail what each part needs to be installed. So if you have any extra questions or want to know what parts I use, throw them in the comments below and I will get back to you, but I am stoked because this coming uh, semester, I will actually be taking a semester off school to work, and so I'll have a Lot more time to work on the car so we're hoping to get this thing dynoed real real soon so stay tuned i cannot wait and uh guys hey have a good one